Some say the gory days of Wes Craven and John Carpenter are a, a thing of the past, but thankfully there's still one director that's trying to shake up the horror genre. Eli Roth is the new king of horror movies in Hollywood. Roth is considered to be the pioneer of a group of filmmakers dubbed the Splat Pack because of their dedication to the classic horror genre. Eli established himself as a horror director with his first film, Cabin Fever, which was a departure from modern horror film styles. He followed up that success with the acclaimed gore fest, Hostel. Action! Now Roth is back to reshaping horror with his latest bunkhouse bloodbath, Hostel 2. And the early buzz says the film ups the ante of the original with more outrageous gore and just the right amount of fun. That sounds so therapeutic. Will Hostel 2 continue to push the horror genre further? And can we officially call him the new Wes Craven? It's time to lose a limb, it's the loop. Woo! My guest tonight, a true horror movie maven, and if you listen to G4, a true icon, director Eli Roth. Eli, welcome to The Loop One-on-One. -on -one. Thanks, man. Glad to be here. Dude, it's good to see you again, buddy. Last time you were here, uh, the original Hostel was about to be released, mm -hmm. and I asked you straight up, I said, Eli, how, how does it feel knowing tomorrow you're going to wake up, you're going to hit the alarm clock, and you're going to have the number one movie in the country and millions of dollars you know, in the bank and at the box office? Second time around, do you feel any different? Well, obviously, any time you get a movie in the theaters, it's a victory. And the, and the first one was such a shock that it you know, made the money that it did. So for part two, the goal is to make a better, scarier, smarter movie. And now we're being released in the summer. So now you're going up against movies that are going out on 2,000 more screens than you are. Like, you know, it's Ocean's 13, Pirates. It's huge competition. So it's really about making a better movie so it holds up in the long run. So it's not really where you open up. Mm -hmm. It's where you end up. And so far, the reaction to the film is unbelievable. And almost unanimously, audiences love it so much more than but, the first one. But you personally, Eli, because, I mean, the first time I had you on, I said, wow, it was like Tarantino Presents. And that was a big deal that Quentin put his name. This time, I see every single poster. And, yeah, Quentin's name is there in, in the corner in this dark gray font. But it's, this is clearly an Eli Roth joint. So, I mean, is there any extra added pressure that when you wake up and hit the alarm clock, it might not be as big as the first? Well, it's not about making a movie that's as big as the first. It's about making a movie that's better than the first. And I genuinely put, I put more pressure on myself than anyone could ever put on me. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to make Aliens or Road Warrior. And I really wanted to try and redefine what people's perception of what a horror sequel can be. I mean, most horror sequels are terrible. And I thought, I can continue the story, make a better movie. And I'm telling you, the ending of this movie kills. I've been watching it with audiences, and nothing else that's out there in the theaters is going to have what we have at the ending of Hostel Part 2. So I actually feel, I feel really, really great about it. I feel like I've learned from my mistakes and made a much better film. Now, I've read a bunch of interviews, and I hear you talk about pushing the gore envelope, mm -hmm. and some are already saying that, that, you know, Hostel Part 1 had excessive amounts of violence. Is there a line that you personally refuse to cross, or are you purely limited by the studios and, and the MPAA by this point? No, actually, the studios encourage you to shoot more gore, and I, I shoot everything, and really in the editing is when I decide to pull back. For me, the goal isn't to make a gorier movie. It's easy. If you, wanna, if you want more gore, you just add another tool, add another body part. There, you have more gore. How do you make a movie that's scarier? that's smarter, that keeps people on the edge of their seat going, what happens next? What happens next? And if you have any element that takes you out of that, if it's the gore, if it's the scares, if it's the music, if it's the camera, if it's anything that takes you out of that so that you feel, ah, uh, that's, that's what the line I want right. cross. You just want everything going, what's next? What's next? What's next? Well, you mentioned learning from your mistakes, and I think that's huge when a director says, hey, look, I, I, I figured something out. So were those, those, those mistakes in part one, did, did you learn from them in part two? What were those mistakes? Well, you know, I watched the movie probably 150 times with audiences around the world, and some of the stuff in Amsterdam, some of the you know, comedic stuff, the sexual stuff, I dropped. The scenes that really worked, obviously the kids that no one can control, they will mess with anybody. The, the gore stuff, like, you know, the eye gas and the eye goo, but the scene... That yeah, I really remember that one well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. The scene that tended to freak people out more than any was that scene in the locker room with Rick Hoffman, who plays the American client, the businessman, who's like, how do you kill someone? Do you kill them fast? Do you do it slow? What do you use, a knife or a gun? Right. And everyone would say, I want to see a movie about that guy. That scene disturbed me more than anything else in the film. And it showed me that there was no violence, no scary lighting, no scary music. It was the idea and the actor's face that made it disturbing. And I really, really tried to make the entire sequel feel like that scene. And we explore that whole side of it. We're going to learn everything about this factory. Well, now, Hostel Part 2, it's, I mean, it's already getting better reviews than the first from what we've seen early on. But earlier this week, movie critic David Poland, he admitted to obtaining a pirated copy of the film. And he called it disgusting and degrading and misogynistic. By the way, Eli, he thinks you're soulless. I don't know if you caught what he wrote, but yeah, I have I mean, to ask what bothers you more. Is it a reviewer that thinks you're soulless, or is it a critic reviewing a bootleg copy of a movie before it's actually out? Oh, the bootleg copy. I'm no stranger to vicious reviews, and a review like that can actually only help the movie. But see the final movie. I mean, if that's your job, number one, 
watch the final version of the film. What if you had watched Psycho on YouTube with no sound? I mean, there was, it's not that he saw the movie. He saw a work print that was stolen from our editing room. Things have changed. There's no sound. There's no music. There's, it's a completely different movie. Right. What's very dangerous and disturbing, and this is a message to all filmmakers, not just horror filmmakers, that we have a nationally syndicated critic endorsing piracy. He is pirating a movie and telling people it's okay to pirate a movie as long as it's hostile too. Well, it's not okay. That is against the law. And where's it going to stop? Who's next? Right. Why is David Poland suddenly the tastemaker of America? Well, what's why, the, is, why is David Poland the moral majority who says it's okay to pirate hostile too? And what's the recourse there? I the, mean, what, what the, would you like to see happen to someone like David What Poland? should happen is, number one, his credentials should be revoked. Number two, he should be fired for whoever's employing him. The studio should shut him out. And I'm, I'm going to go after him. And I think the studio should go after him legally for piracy. You can't go after someone for a bad review. That's part of it. That's their right to express that. But, but you can go after someone for pirating a movie. I do we want to say, in David's we defense, have to set Eli, an he, he did say what he was doing was terribly wrong. Right. So, you know, that automatically lets him yeah, off the exactly. hook, of course, right? Yeah, well, exactly. Like, I, th I think most <laughs> criminals, when they commit a crime, are aware <laughs> that it's actually wrong. Otherwise, they would do it in broad daylight in front of people. Not Paris. That poor girl had no idea what was coming. She really had okay. no idea, but she's in her own bubble. We can make exceptions for Paris. All right. I got I to gotta move it on to a little bit lighter fare. You know, you're a huge fan of the horror genre. I am yeah. as well. But I'm curious, how psyched are you for films like Halloween and Captivity? I mean, is this going to be a good year for horror? Are you excited? I'm excited for Halloween. I'm not excited for Captivity. Uh, I don't think it's really supposed to be a very good movie, but uh, uh, maybe, maybe it'll surprise me. I always want every movie to be great when I go see it, and so I'm psyched whenever there's a horror movie in the theater. All right, Eli, final word. Hostel 3, are we going to be doing this again? Absolutely not. There's Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2, and I'll, I'll tell you what. I hate Godfather 3. I hate Alien 3. I hate a third movie that ruins it. Oh, but you said, you, Eli, you, you said horror, horror sequels always suck, and you're going to break the mold with Hostel Part 2. Couldn't you do it again with 3? If maybe? I can do it again with Part 3... Yeah, I'll make a third movie. But right now, the ending of Hostile Part 2 is the showstopper. It's the denouement. It's going to bring the house down. There's nothing that in all of the films. It's basically both movies together are a build-up to the end of Hostile Part 2. I don't think anything will ever top it. I don't think any other movie, I don't care how much money you have in special effects or how much movie stars you have in your film, no other movie will have what we have at the ending of Hostile Part 2. People are going to go crazy when they see it. That alone has, has a team of interns getting me my tickets on movietickets.com. Thank awesome, you, Eli, man. for that. Huge thanks to Eli Roth for joining us, Thanks, folks. everybody. Hostile Part 2 is in theaters everywhere today. Go see it. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.